the review that I published for the government, known as the Marmot Review on Health Inequalities, made clear that we need action across the whole of society. But I also said, I hope clearly, that the medical profession has a key role to play. Firstly, as doctors, there's much that can happen within medicine, making sure we have universal access to everybody, regardless of ability to pay, etc. More prevention, more health promotion. Secondly, though, uh, it's very important that within the medical profession, we work with other sectors. If you're the Secretary of State for Health, you should be the advocate in Cabinet. If you're a local medical practitioner, you should be working with other sectors. If you're the, a PCT, you should be working with other sectors. And so that we should be the advocates. And I'd like the BMA to stand up and make a strong statement about this issue. And thirdly, the importance of knowledge, which includes monitoring, it includes evaluation. So scientific understanding of whether anything that we're proposing is making a difference. Of course, you published that report for the last government. There is a, a new administration now. Because of the debt that the country has and the cuts that are having to be made, it seems very obvious that there are going to be further health inequalities in the future. Do you have great concerns about that? One of the things that our report said was that all government action should be evaluated for its impact, its likely impact on health inequalities. It's not enough to say that a budget is fair. What you have to do is actually look at the likely impact on different sections of the population. Now, we did say that this was not only about money. We had six domains of recommendations. If it were only about money, we would have only had one domain, finances. But we had six domains, early child development and education, education, in the broader sense, employment and working conditions, having enough money to live on, sustainable communities, and prevention. I would hope that we could convince a new government that it should be taking action on all of these fronts. And yet, at the moment, it seems that a lot of the constraints which are to be made financially are going to hit those who are on very low incomes. It does. Um, we need to stand up and say that very loudly. And if doctors say that, if the British Medical Association says that, that voice will be heard. The NHS has always had a problem in making its budget stretch far enough because it has a lot to pay for and an increasingly elderly population, expensive treatments. What would you hope to be the most important quality treatments and care that has to be protected? Well, we've been told that the NHS budget will be protected. I hope that is the case. Uh, we have to see. Uh, so I'm not going to start choosing which bit of it should be more protected than others. I think the NH bu NHS budget should be protected. We're only about average among rich countries in our spending on health care. There's not a case to be made for reducing it. Um, but the point that I made earlier is ma making sure that we get equal access to high quality treatment, that people are not disadvantaged by who they are, by their ethnicity, by where they live, by disability or other things. And is it possible to earmark particular areas um, in which funding can be focused in order to help greater quantities of those who have health inequalities or not? Well, we said in my report that currently the NHS spends 4% of its budget on prevention. We said that should go up. We actually said 7%, but it should go the, the point being there should be a dramatic improvement in that proportion spent on prevention. It does seem likely, though, that in a cash-strapped budget situation, prevention is one of the things that is not going to get funding. That's very short-term thinking, isn't it? It's very short-term thinking. Let's, let's cut something like that today, regardless of its consequences tomorrow. Uh, I hope we won't indulge in such short-term thinking.
Do you think that the majority of doctors understand what the people who are represented in your report really experience in their lives? Well, I had a meeting with the GP committee of the British Medical Association. I guess that must be atypical of GPs because it's only those GPs who get onto the GP committee. And I made a presentation about my report and then they went round the table. They showed a keen understanding of how the circumstances in which people are born, grow, live, work and age affect their health. A keen understanding. I was hugely encouraged. This was not a matter of my educating anybody. They, they live it daily. What we were trying to do is make recommendations about how we can make a difference to these conditions that influence the health and well-being of patients out there in the NHS. What single biggest thing could doctors who are watching this do to help the health inequalities within their practice? When I said that there were three roles for doctors, the first of which was, as I put it, putting our own house in order. So if you ask what can doctors do in their own practice to put their own house in order, it's recognising that people come from a set of social conditions that influence their health and may actually influence the likelihood of their even seeing the GP in the first place. So it's actually making sure there's real access. Putting more emphasis on prevention and health promotion and working with others to address those conditions. If they're young children, you don't just treat young children. You ask what are the conditions that are influencing the health of those young children, and that means working with other sectors. So I think it's really very important that we both do what we do as doctors within practice, but also work closely with others. So Michael Marmot, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.